Hello, friend. Thomas Matthew IV. The Lord stirred me up to bring this word, and I want to entitle this The Life of Faith. I'm going to do a very quick introduction here on this, and then I'm going to get more into it uh, in ensuing broadcast, upcoming broadcast. The, um, the Lord wants us to know that we have to pass a test with Him. He said, Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Hebrews 11.6. The book of Nehemiah, uh, I was just looking at. The, Nehemiah had an issue of uh, looking at something that was broken. And situations even in your own life could be messed up. And you have to t exercise it by faith. And even when the opponents come, those Sambalas and Tobias, those idiots, and the stupid devils and their ugly friends, I like to call them, then uh, you have to just pursue it anyway. You know, God wants to see that you're a big man or a big lady, a king as a man and a queen as a woman, that you will rise up to the occasion and be a great leader. You know what I mean? You can't just think uh, that you can just uh, have everything so easy all the time. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. And I like to add the word yet. That's my uh, embellishment there. I'm not adding or taking away from it. I'm just explaining the actual sentence by using the word yet because you're using your faith because you want to see something and you uh, haven't seen it yet, but you will see it if you believe it. The Lord has had me in this whole week prophesying and declaring things that are not as though they already were. You have to be very careful about your faith level. You have to believe that you already received when you prayed and you already have it. It's already a done deal. It's not like a deal that's going to happen. It has already happened, but now it's just in the process of manifesting. Are you hearing that? Now, um, Mark eleven twenty four says, whatever things you are desiring for, whatever things you want, when you're praying, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So it's not a matter of just, uh, uh, you know, seeing everything. You know, seeing is believing, the world says. Well, in our vernacular and vocabulary, as faith people, as prophetic people, as God's own spirit-led people, believing is seeing. You know, you got to believe first. Thomas said, I want to put my hand in the side. You know, he put his hands in the hole in Jesus' side and his fingers through his, his uh, you know, nail-pierced uh, hand or wrist and said, man, this is great. Missouri in America, is a, they have this saying, the show me state. It's on their license plate. Show me and I'll believe it. Now, Thomas was good, but I, I don't blame him for that. He really wanted to see. He wanted. He was. He and he was the only person. Thomas is a great name, and that's my name, of course. You know that, because he was the only person that touched the resurrected body of the Lord. And at that time, maybe some did afterwards, but he was the first. But Jesus said, "Blessed are those who haven't seen, yet believe." In other words, they they use faith to believe that they're going to see because they believe. They're going to see because they believe. So when you're seeing an uh, adverse situation, you have to rise up and prophesy to it. And don't be a crybaby about it. Just get up, get in the spirit, go take a long shower, just close the door and let the steam, you know, envelop the room. You can't see much and you're just there. And, you know, God talks to me when I'm in that room talks to me. He did again a few minutes ago, a while ago. I feel just, wow. You know, you ask the Lord about something, and He'll answer you very loud and clear. Sometimes when you're sitting, you got TV screens, you got phones, you got people. Come on. You know, and there's certain places where you don't have any of that. Just take that time and get in the spirit world and begin to prophesy, and you will see the results. I told a testimony the other day, um, I, I was really praying on Sunday, Monday morning, declaring things, you know, things that are hard, things that are stubborn, things that really need to be dealt with, you know. And 7 a.m. the next morning, before the business hours even opened, the phone call came of the miracle. Listen, and it's big. Listen, I'm telling you, 
that God works like this and he wants to see that you're a true warrior and you have real faith and you're going to exercise your faith and you're not going to be a weakling and you're going to rise up and begin to speak. Our wep the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through what? Through our speech, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and also everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, everything that rises itself against the knowledge of Christ, against the power of God and the will of God in your life, you come after it. Isaiah 54, and, and, and cast it down and make it submit to you and you get the result that you need and want. And then also in Isaiah 54, 17, the Lord said, uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue, every voice, anything that rises itself against you, raises itself against you or your well-being, you will condemn it as my servant. This is my heritage for my servants, said the Lord. So you have to rise up and take it by force. It's not like, uh, you know, you just sit there and wait and cry about it and just like whatever rolls. No, you take authority over. You're the king. Here's the Here's the real... Here's the real sword. Now, this is powerful. Now, all these words are powerful. They're all from the Bible. Let me tell you something. When you have scripture, not personal opinion. I heard a prophet on the air, you saying something, personal opinion about something. And I kind of relate, you know, it kind of uh, resonated. And I thought, he doesn't have that. So maybe his personal opinion is jealous over that, something that I have. And I thought, Fooey on you, mate, on that, you know. But when you have the Bible, that's just a personal opinion. But when you have the Bible, the Bible, the Word of God, now you're standing on something. Here it is, Isaiah 45, 11. Make a note of this. He said, concerning the works of my hands, you command me. God gave us that permission. You thought, man, I don't think I can really command the boss. Uh, but hey, rise up. He said it there. So certain people, situations, things that you want to see happen, you have to speak to it. And I'm telling you, as God's prophet, I guarantee you, if you do it right, if you do it according to the word, if you do it according to faith, you're going to see the result. What you're asking for and wanting will come into fruition and manifestation for you. Wow, this is powerful. So rise up. I want to call this the life of faith. Volume 1, very short little introduction here, and I'll continue in this. The Lord bless you. Right? It's time to rise up. Call things that are not as though they were. Now, here's how you do it. You release the angels. You tell the, the, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, and, and that he releases his angels, that, that people will not have rest until they bless you. People that have promised you things and haven't done it, they're going to be visited by God and by the angels and the Holy Ghost, and they're going to they're perform what they promised. What they're supposed to do for you, they can't slack off on it. Delay doesn't. Delay also doesn't mean denial. I asked the Lord about a particular thing, and I, and he said to me, "There's the person is stretched, you know." I said that he said they're okay, but they're stretched. They're messed up because I said I haven't heard from this person. You know what's up? And he told me. So I mean that's that's reality. So but you have to stay on it, and this is the way I pray that people around them will trouble them about it. That people that are involved in every situation of something that you need and want and really need and really want, that's a good thing according to the will of God. Now, I don't have time to go in the differentiation of what's between the will of God and not. But if it's according to the will of God, really what he thinks, not what you or anybody else thinks, but what, what he's ordained, then you got to take it by force. You have to be violent. Matthew eleven twelve said the kingdom of heaven permits aggression and the, per the aggressive one will take it by force. So you need to do that, my friend. Rise up. Pray that people will have no rest until they bless you. They can't get away from what they promise or the thing that they're supposed to do or the good things that you're desiring, even if you don't know who's going to do it yet. That's another category. So you may not know who's, who's going to do something for you that you need. You pray and prophesy prophetically and declare that whoever has your stuff is going to bring it to you supernaturally, even if you don't know them yet. And if it's something you're involved in, like several things that we're doing, and you know about the situation, you know who's in it, you know the details of it, you command that that thing happen in Jesus' name. Do you get me? You're getting this.
Are you with me? Yes, you are. Follow the Holy Ghost and don't be a wimp and sit down and don't be fearful and don't get scared. I know it's, I know there's warfare. I know it's bad. Things are difficult. Don't get afraid. Trust in God. Some trust in horses and chariots, but I'll trust in the Lord and in his powerful name. The Lord is my high tower and him will I trust. He's my boss. He's my God. He's going to answer by fire. You got to get that. You have to live like that. 24-7, 365, baby. <laughs> so, uh, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray this boldness that's come on me, that's been on me for years, comes upon my precious friend and partner. In Jesus' name, right now, by the Holy Ghost, that they get everything that they need and want. In Jesus' name. And I call it done right now. In Jesus' mighty name. So be it. It is done. And let the power of the anointing fire from heaven come upon you right now will be released upon you right now in Jesus' name. There it is. Whew. Like a wind blowing in from the Holy Ghost from heaven. Wow. We're heaven's agents on the earth. We're on the earth, but we're deputized and ordained and commissioned by heaven to bring heaven to earth and his, the manifestation of his miracles, blessings, provisions, deliverances, Material things, spiritual things, physical things, financial things, every good thing that you need, God has it. It's, the earth has it. You have to just stir it up now and speak to it in Jesus' name. And say, Satan, take your hands off my money. Take your hands off of my things. Take your hands off of anyone that's involved with something good for me. And I command that the Lord release your angels to go and cause the money to come into my hands. In Jesus' name, I claim it and I take it. Money is coming to me right now. It's all coming to me right now. Everything that I need. And some things are not money. Some things are important, as important as that, that are in the game of, in the things of life. I claim them all in Jesus' name. And perfect health, perfect healing, perfect deliverance, perfect wholeness and wellness in Jesus' name. It's mine in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. For the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow. Proverbs 10, 22 said. I claim it. I take it by force in Jesus' name. And God says again, Isaiah 45, 11, I said, command the works of my hands. I'll work for you, says the Lord. I'll do it. I want to see you have every good thing. It's my desire. You're the apple of my eye. You're in the palm of my hand. But you got to rise up and take it by force, by faith in Jesus' name. The Life of Faith, Volume 1. Here we are. Okay, so... Uh, the e-books are going to be coming out to every person that's sewn and is sewing into the work here. You can send by M-Pesa. You can send by PayPal, Cash App, website uh, to donate. And it's all going to be in the heading of the title and also in the comments. Thank you for being my partner. You'll be receiving e-books uh, as my love gift for everybody that's sewing. And please do be generous for the world mission of Thomas Meth and the Fourth. We're all over the nations of the world. Uh, the American continent, the African continent, Asia, Middle East, everywhere, Europe, my God. So, and on and on. So, the Lord bless you, make his face to shine upon you, give you peace, but give you prosperity and everything that you're believing for. In Jesus' name, I'll talk to you here on the next broadcast. Love you much.